You're tuned to the 50,000 watt definition of fairness. Just say it. WLS Talk Radio 94.7 FM and 890 AM. Ty and Ed, uh, we're still with What Is That? This uh, Someone faxed me something from the Purdue Calumet News. The Wizard of AIDS was to be performed and was to performed April 13th in Hammond, Indiana. And uh, You're pulling my leg, at the right? Purdue University Calumet. Yeah, a compassionate and humorous AIDS prevention message. Uh, and uh, just a little description in the release about Dorothy. Uh, protected by the red ruby rubber slippers, Dorothy travels with her three comrades down the yellow brick road. They emerge from the darkness of the forest of sexually transmitted diseases, singing gonorrhea, herpes, and AIDS. Oh, my. Red so, rubber slippers? Yeah, to red ruby rubber slippers. Excuse me? Oh, my, to foil the wit wicked witch of the unsafe sex by using their brains, their heart, and their courage. Wow. If they only had a Edwin, brain. Edwin, if they Edwin, only had a brain. Edmund Morrell of Schomburg sent us a letter about Carol Mosley Braun and, and Senator Braun about the parking spot. I'm just going to read his last paragraph. He says, Ms. Braun, enjoy the six years of this term, for you will not see another one after it. People are tired of all this garbage. We remember this deal about parking spaces, NAFTA, and a 1994 budget. Have a nice day. Signed, Edmund H. Morrell. That's what he said. Hey, she's I not the that, only one griping I, about the parking. I thought that was cute. Uh, here's one, an interesting one from Denise Duggan, uh, 8 South Maple and Mount Prospect. If thousands of us could go back and undo the decisions we made to leave our mates because the passion was gone, because we had the freedom to do our own thing and didn't have to accept an unfulfilling relationship, how different would our world be now? Would we, would we be more unhappy in our old marriages than we are in our new marriages or in our singleness? Would there be so many women trying to make ends meet, not having time for themselves, their families, or their communities? Would there be so many men out of work if there weren't so many women who had to work? Would there be so many low-paying jobs if the supply of labor were not so abundant? Would there be so many unwed mothers if there weren't so many young men providing, proving their manhood with the child instead of a career? Would government be so big? Would taxes be so high? Would there be so many people turning to drugs if families were closer and more men could find employment? Would there be so much crime? Most of all, how would our children's lives be different? Would they feel more secure? Would they be safer? Would they be more interested in school and sports if their parents were there to watch over them and encourage them? Would they learn the value of commitment? Would they learn the meaning of love from examples in their own homes instead of from actors or on a screen? Would they be less angry? Would they be more respectful? Would they be less abusive? Would they be less abused? If there hadn't been so many divorces in the past, would our world be so bad in the present? Just some thoughts on family values. Who's that from? Denise Duggan, Mount Prospect, Illinois. Read my lips. Yes, yes, yes to all of the above. Good letter. Yeah. Good letter. I'm going to read another letter. It's, this one's addressed to me, Ty, uh, and you'll understand why. Why you did it again, didn't you? I'm HIV negative. I haven't had an intimate sex with another man in quite a few years. Only safe sex. I believe if one has AIDS or is HIV positive, that hospitals and their staff should be aware of that to take extra protection. And my, my comment is... That's not the way it is now. Going back to the letter. In these dangerous years since the AIDS epidemic, it has affected us all. Eddie, I've written to you before, and you know my opinions. I'm sure as hell have heard yours on the radio. I believe in isolating I believe in isolating AIDS patients. I do agree with you on the above-mentioned points. I've done extensive reading and lost in the last two years. I have a library of books I've read and collected during this time. What I have a problem with is your off-the-cuff homophobic comments. What do you know about me... What you do know about me if you've read my previous letters to you. I've written to Tom Tradup, your station manager. I've been cautioned to listen to a different station, but I haven't heeded their advice. What would you do if your sons or daughters or grandchildren came to you and told you that they are gay or lesbian or bisexual? What would you do? Or if they might be HIV positive or had AIDS, what would you do? Stop loving them? Is that what you'd do? Tell them never to see you again? Cut them off of any inheritance? Damn them to hell? Ignore them, make fun of them, ridicule them, verbally abuse them, physically abuse them, kill them. Make up your mind now. What do you think now that I've asked you these questions? In the last few weeks, I've seen a gay priest over in Hyde Park. I attend Sunday Mass at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church at Belmont and Halstead Avenues. I attend the church that has Sunday Mass every Sunday. This ministry is called the Archdiocesan, Archdiocesan Gay Lesbian Organization. Uh, Cardinal Bernardine initiated this ministry for gays, lesbians over six years ago. The Baltimore Roman Catholic Diocese has initiated similar programs. Well, I think I get the point. Uh, 
would I stop loving someone uh, because they were homosexual or they had HIV? Uh, I, I try to help them? No, I wouldn't. Uh, am I uh, against the type of conduct that causes and the choice of conduct that causes these particular problems and these particular diseases? Yes, I am. He also goes on to say, uh, these are gay, there are gay saints, Joan of Arc, a lesbian, uh, Terzi, Papa Yusko, a Polish priest, concentration camp survivor. The list goes on and on. Uh, I don't hate anybody. I'm not homophobic. I just don't like what some people do and what the, the, some people's choice of lifestyle is. Uh, would I try to help anybody in pain who needed help, uh, whether they related to me or not? Yes, I would. And considering the heat that the Archdiocese has been catching lately, going back to that campaign, Good Guys Wear Black, in hopes of taking some of the heat off of them, I wonder what that gay priest that he referred to in Hyde Park actually had to say to him. I right. wonder how good of a guy he was. Good point. Jim Walsh from Elmhurst sent us this letter. So I'm just going to read the last part of it. Uh, he's talking about the, our system of justice uh, in this country. The current system is an obvious failure. I vote for a change, and I don't mean more policemen. We have enough policemen. We need a serious system of punishment that truly discourages crime, a system of criminals' punishment similar to the system that so-called barbarous but safe and clean country of Singapore where crime doesn't pay. Uh, does this sound cruel? It's time for the bad guys to get a Singapore kick in the butt. I would like to walk in the park without fear. And now the park district's coming up with all kinds of programs to get you to entice you to come back to the parks. Right. I'll tell you what. They're saying come out and play. Yeah. First of all, you better get off all the gra graffiti that's on the walls. Uh, they're in the parks. Uh, and, if, and if you make them uh, not gang hangouts or uh, gang banger type hangouts where people can, in fact, uh, feel comfortable and feel safe. But nobody feels safe in this town. Any place. Any place. That's why the mayor says he wants people to leave. Go to the suburbs so he can manage the city. Yeah. Maybe he should leave. Less people, it'll uh, be safer. Got a letter from uh, by Robert Powell. The mayor's out, logic. Out my way. And he gave me some backup and copies. Remember the, uh, the boxer, the, the great name of Battling Nelson? Of course. Battling Nelson, he was a lightweight champ of the world in the early 1900s. And he came out and documented. I got copies of the book. I got copies of him here. Guess where Battling Nelson was from? South Hagwish. Southeast side. Hagwish, yeah. Hegwish, Illinois, battling Nelson. Hard to believe. Although we got a lot of battlers over there. Maybe it's not so hard to believe. We've got another... Could have been uh, a way of life for we him. got a policeman who uh, went to Hawaii on vacation who uh, will acknowledge uh, Mr. B uh, for sending us this stuff where he sends us some clippings from the Hawaii newspapers, in particular about uh, this young man in Singapore where everybody over there is saying, you know, nail this bugger. Cane him. Uh, and uh, get Cane the him. job done. Cane him. Smoke him. And coming up next, we're going to look at the past, speaking of smoking people, the past, present, and hopefully the very short future of John Wayne Gacy. Nuke him. Give him the juice on WLS Talk Radio, FM and A. Fought in all the wars. Yes, it's true. We were heroes, too. It's documented history. So you know that it's true Took this country to a new level Taught you things you never knew But instead of sharing You took what did belong to you I'm an American for you That's what you Here we go Here we go and Ty Wansley. This is what democracy is all about. Just say it. WLS Talk Radio 94.7 FM and 890 AM. Ty and Ed, our phone number is 591-8900. And we're talking about the Death Watch. The killer clown. Aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay. Counting down the days to the Gacy Day Parade. Uh, how could it happen? Why did it happen, and why in the world is it taking so long to get rid of this Why clown? did it take so long for uh, Gacy to be found out uh, that he ultimately killed almost 30-plus people and buried a lot of them in his house? How, how does someone get away with that? Exactly. Well, our guest can uh, tune us in on that. Our guest is retired police officer. I'm, I'm thinking he was a sergeant, correct, sir? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Retired police sergeant John Cernowski. Officer, good afternoon and welcome. Hi, Ty. How are you? And All right. Hello, Ed. How you doing, sir? Very good. Good. 
Sergeant, how could he get away with it for so long? How did it happen, and why? Well, Ty, let me, uh, let me uh, uh, say this. Uh, when I investigated what I perceived to be his first homicide, would have been back... We're getting some, we're getting some. If you're on a speakerphone, could you pick up, please? Uh, pick, pick, up, pick up from the speaker, if at all possible. I'm on... Okay, hold on a second there. Because otherwise it sounds yeah, like... Yeah, we'll get call, you tape for the show. He's calling us from the bottom. Yeah. Right. yeah. Is that better? If you could just pick up from wherever you're calling. Okay, I did. Is okay. that better? That's a little bit better. Okay, fine. But so, um, it, as I was saying, uh, uh, the thing that okay, I... Hold, hold on yeah. one second, sorry. Do you have your... Sorry, okay, where, I'll tell you what. Where, let's, where let's, you? Put, let's put him on hold. We're going to try to get back to you on another line. Or perhaps if his radio is turned up in the background, yeah. turn it down, and we promise we'll get him a tape we can't and a do, transcript we can't of the do program. This that. Yeah. Now, I wasn't uh, here when Richard Speck was caught yeah. and tried, but certainly it made news around the world. And you were familiar with the Speck case, and a lot of people have drawn certainly similarities between Speck and Gacy. What was the attitude like well, the in Chicago? Speck, what was the atmosphere? Well, the difference between Speck and Gacy is, is Speck on one night of madness uh, and alcohol and, and drugs uh, got into one of the townhouses on 100th Street in the 10th Ward yeah. and, uh, and slaughtered uh, eight uh, nurses. One got away. Um, and uh, uh, there were no other indications that he had done this any other place at any other time. It was... Uh, uh, it appears to be a one-shot, one-opportunity deal, and he was caught within 48 hours. Right. Uh, so it wasn't any extended uh, procedure. And I came to town shortly after Gacy was found out, Yeah. and we've uh, oftentimes talked about his political connection, so it gave me the impression Gacy sort of blended in. Well, he was a Democratic precinct captain. It's, that doesn't qualify one for to be a mass murderer. This is true. Um, and he was also a professional clown, but he was also a... Uh, a contractor, a uh, self-employed contractor who did a lot of work and, and I understand did pretty good work. And, and in so doing, he, uh, he had occasion to always want to hire someone, uh, paid most of them in cash, to assist to do the running, to do some of the grunt work while mm -hmm. he did the detail work. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the people that he could get like that are people who are floating around, in particular young people trying to, and that's who he geared, geared into, uh, trying to make a few bucks. So he'd get them, he'd promote them, uh, said, well, come out of the house, well, I'll pay you tonight, and uh, uh, get some a beer, treat them like uh, an adult. Uh, and then he starts talking about some of the tricks he's got here. Let me show you this one trick here. And all of a sudden, they're, they're handcuffed, or they're, ti they're tied, and they can't get out, and then they're at his mercy. Then you're in the crawl space. Yeah. Let's go back to our guest and see if we've cleared up that telephone problem. Sergeant, are you back with us? That's a yeah. thousand percent better. Sure. Okay, tell us tell us how you got involved in the Gacy case, sir. Oh boy. Sexually abused. Are you saying that the, that there's direct linkage to Gacy to those cases? But 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 those cases to, as of today are still marked unsolved. Yeah. And during that time, you're saying Gacy was virtually a teenager himself. Ah. All right. 
And um, and he and Gacy did in fact walk with a limp. When did you get involved with the Gacy case? Were you involved in, in the in the tracking down and arrest of Gacy? And what did he do? Did he try to... Uh, Joe, Joe felt that uh, uh, with Gacy, that uh, as a 14-year-old, it was very possible for him to have committed the peterson uh, Schussler homicides. And Joe was very interested, and had he been privy to the information uh, at the time that he had uh, uh, made the arrest of Gacy, uh, perhaps the peterson Schussler case would have been solved. Gacy himself, when they grabbed him, ultimately started telling about different places where people were, including uh, some that were found outside, or remains found outside of his premises, correct? Uh, <clears throat> he was talking to uh, Joe Kozinsek on that, yeah. and at that particular time, he told uh, Joe Kozinsek that uh, uh, he had uh, uh, intimated to them that he has killed over uh, 50. Okay. And that left the... Uh, uh, the Peterson Schussler case alive and his psychological makeup, which was very important, uh, as illustrated by Helen Morrison, the psychiatrist who spent 50 hours with him, said uh, that he was um, capable of committing a crime prior to 1958. So that would put him in the avenue of 1950. Did you ever get a chance to talk to Gacy yourself or question him? No, we were uh, corresponding by mail. Okay. All right, I'll tell you what. We're going to put you on hold, Sergeant. We'll come back and we'll open up our phones to our listeners, our telephone connection, we, as always. And we want to ask about whether people think the death penalty really works. And should we have it? And should Johnny Boy Gacy uh, get the the juice? Are you kidding? This, this idiot on death row for 14 years, zapping our tax dollars, selling his well, paintings? you've got a lot of heavy people. Now you've got a gubernatorial race in this in the state. Edgar's four capital punishment, Don Clark Netch, wants Gacy to keep painting. Doesn't want him to right. And we called both of those uh, leaders. Yeah. We tried to get them on today. Right. Maybe we'll have Don Clark Netch on by phone. We hope. Uh, should Gacy be nuked? Should he be given the juice? I said give it to him yesterday. Here's our number, 591-8900. It's a quarter till four. The WLS Dependable Weather Forecast. Showers tonight. We've been calling for rain a couple of days now. We've lucked out. So maybe we'll luck out again. Tonight's projected low 44. Thursday, increasing clouds and mild, the high about 58. It's 58 degrees at O'Hare, 59 midway, 55 at the lake. I fought in all the wars. Yes, it's true. We were heroes, too. It's documented history. So you know that it's true. Took this country to a new level. Taught you things you never knew. Tying at 591-8900, we have with us Sergeant John Cernowski, uh, who says the first link up with John Wayne Gacy, Johnny Boy Gacy. No, John Wayne Gacy. No, no. That's the man. John Wayne name. was an idol. Right. I will not call this guy John Wayne. Well, yeah, this, this guy is too. Johnny Boy Gacy. All right. And uh, said that it goes all the way back to the part of the investigation with the Schuster Grimes, uh, or the Schuster Peterson. That's correct. Yeah. Schuster Peterson um, matter in '55. Was they were looking for a, uh, a youth who walked with a limp, which which would have been uh, hooked up to this guy. And this guy, Gacy, if he planted 33 people or 30 plus people and let, kept a lot of them in the house, kept them hanging around the house after he got through with them, uh, I'm sure that wasn't uh, the first time uh, it would seem that uh, he'd ever kill people. Now, in your correspondence, even though it was uh, in letter form, what did Gacy actually tell you concerning the comparison well, between these two cases? During our, uh, our corresponding, uh, or correspondence, there was a reporter by the name of Richie Fahula who corresponded with John relative to information that uh, we were seeking relative to uh, the peterson Schussler homicides, uh, the method of operation and the things that we needed. For instance, the P 
Peterson boy and the Schussler boys had dirt on the bottom of their feet. Uh, John responds with a three-car garage with a dirt floor at 4505 Marmora. Uh, we were looking for a Packard automobile, and uh, because of the striation marks on the body, uh, they were uh, placed in a Packard automobile. John's family owned the Packard automobile at the time. Uh, it, it went it, just on and on relative to uh, the possibility that he was involved. His uncle, who he always visited, lived less than one block away uh, from the Peterson boy, which uh, I felt uh, he knew. And from a kid that we turned up by the name of Terry Riley, who was a friend of Bobby, said there was a kid that uh, was from just outside the neighborhood who you Bobby knew and... Uh, came around their neighborhood. But again, was, but again, my question, Sergeant, is what did Gacy tell you in his letters? Did he tell you, I'm obviously the wrong guy, this is all did, circumstantial? Did you, did you correspond with him, Sergeant? Oh, sure. And he, he told me, he asked, he said to me, he says, why are you pursuing this? He says, the guy you're seeking is locked up. He says, why are you wasting your time? And, and, what, did, uh, and what did you tell him? What did I tell him? I wrote back and said uh, to him that um, uh, I have been pursuing this case uh, for many years. And in our correspondence, I intimated that uh, he uh, is directly responsible in the Peterson Schussler case. Trying at this late time or a later time in the 80s, when we found out in 1980, <clears throat> when Joe Kozinsek in 79 had made the arrest of Gacy in the 30. Uh, responsible for the 33 killings. We start now because he, of his method of killing and the way he was killing. We start putting this together and there was uh, through the psychological profile uh. and the reports that there was a possibility that he indeed committed this crime along with Valanis's drawing. The key word is the key word is possibility. Now I have no doubt that he did it and did all of these crimes if not most of them. Okay, but Hi, but you, but you this. keep, but you keep saying you were intimating, and it sounds like you're intimating now. No, because um, on Valanis's drawing, Valanis drew a composite drawing of the 14-year-old youth that we were looking for, and in all this time, we never turned up this kid with the limp. But in uh, 1992, there are pictures that are printed of John Wayne Gacy when he was 14, and if you look at the picture. You see Valanis's drawing. Okay, what would you like to leave us with in closing for people who were in Chicago during the time of the investigation and the arrest, and for people who are just coming to the area but are vaguely familiar with the case? What should everyone know, in your view, about John Wayne Gacy? That John Wayne Gacy has committed other crimes. That he's committed multitude murder. He has started in his youth. And it's very conceivable that he could have killed two or three times as many as 33 that he found in his house. Absolutely, especially in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, when he worked in the mortuary because he was a necrophiliac. We were told that originally in the investigation that we would be looking for a necrophiliac, and he turned out to be one. He was a necrophiliac? Yes, he was. Oh, boy. Well, I, for one, am looking for the day when he That's gets the That's why I will juice. never call him anything but Johnny Boy. Sergeant, we appreciate your time. Thanks for your time, Sarge. Okay. And good talking to you. Bye. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so the countdown continues. It, it, he, gets, uh, he gets the lethal injection on May the 10th, uh, John Gacy. And now we have, uh, we've, we've complicated things uh, uh, in our society. Uh, and people are talking about Supreme Court decisions and laws that are being considered in Congress, saying that since there are so many minorities on death row around this country, uh, is it really uh, uh, equal-handed and equal, uh, equally served justice to have uh, uh, minorities be the preponderance of people who are in death row who are, in fact, uh, going to uh, be put to death ultimately based upon the length of times of appeal? And is the death penalty really work? And uh, some people are now suggesting quotas that before you can uh, kill a minority via a the death penalty, you have to kill one non-minority, a minority, and, and break it down that way, which also seems insane to me. And the question, the eternal question... Is it actually a deterrent? Is it actually a deterrent? Is the death penalty, does that stop someone from killing someone? And, and, and in our society today, we know that people who are convicted of murder 
uh, serve uh, the average sentence of six and a half years. Right. Well, certainly, you're absolutely right. Historically, there is a preponderance of minorities on death row. That's a given. There's no doubt about it. But as I've said in the past, when you've got an obvious case like a Gacy or a Dahmer, that transcends race. Put them to sleep now. Five nine one eight nine hundred. 800 you heard from our guest. You've heard our positions. Ed, let's go to the phones and see what our listeners have to say. Who's first? Springfield to Sean. Sean, thanks for holding on. You're on WLS Talk Radio. Yeah, uh, I say uh, he, he needs to get the lethal injection right away because I'm sick of my uh, tax money. You know, yeah, why should we support this guy? Yeah, right, that money could be used for education. I mean, I'm, I'm a college student, and uh, it just makes me sick knowing that... Uh, all my money is going for his appeals and, you know, to house him in a prison. Not all your money, but too much of it. Well, too, too much of it. But, but what if Gacy cries and says, look, I'm an artiste. I'm an artist. I'm trying to sell my artwork. I'm trying to reform. Give me a chance to change my life. I suppose you just don't want to hear that. Well, how many appeals did his victims get? You got that right. You got that right. And I'll tell you, uh, in San Francisco, uh, just uh, in Monday's paper... A sharply divided federal appeals court in San Francisco has ruled that a Washington state man may be hanged within 42 days, even though he's entitled to 90 days to file an appeal with the Supreme Court. We've got to make, uh, if, we're, if capital punishment is, is the deal, then we ought to make it uh, sure and swift, not have everybody uh, being on death row for 11 years. That's why we need... Eating our tax dollars. That's why we need a greater enforcement of corporal punishment. If the, if the retired police officer was saying that Gacy started his pattern of, of nefarious activities when he was 14 or 15, hey, inflict corporal punishment on Gacy when he was a kid, and maybe we could have nipped this you all in the butt. You mean Canem, maybe? Canem. Give well, it to him. Some guys might like that. Okay. Some guys might. But We're talking it, about Jim Johnson. It could have been preventative yeah. medicine for John Wayne Gacy. I tell you what, for everyone on hold, do us a favor, hold on. We're going to accommodate as many calls as we can. We also have put out calls to Governor Edgar, to Don Clark Netch, to the Attorney General, Roland Burris. We hope to hear from, if not uh, one or two, maybe all of them, but we want to hear from you at 591. And maybe John, Johnny Boy Gacy can call us collect. We'll you, pick up the tip. Why that. not? Yeah. Before it's too late. On WLS Talk Radio, FM and AM. Today, a lot of Americans, about 40 million of us, have turned our homes into our workplace. Yeah, I mean, so when we need new ideas... We know who to turn to, ourselves.